An indictment is a formal accusation, based upon available evidence, that a person has committed a serious crime. It is typically issued by a grand jury, a group of citizens who review the evidence presented by the prosecution. The indictment outlines the specific charges against the accused and serves as the basis for initiating a criminal trial. If there's enough evidence to prove that a person committed a crime, then they're indicted. The most important thing to know about indictments is that they're not required for every single crime. On a federal level, they're only required for felonies that will be heard by federal courts. States aren't required to indict every person who they believe has violated the law. That said, many states have passed laws that require an indictment to charge someone with a felony crime. These states include Massachusetts, New York, Ohio, and Texas. The confusing part is that an indictment can come at very different parts of the trial process. Some jurisdictions pursue an indictment prior to placing someone under arrest, while others place someone under arrest, and then send the case out for indictment. Most of the time, a person will know that the police are interested in them for a crime, it's normally not something that takes someone by surprise. Once an indictment is issued, it initiates the formal legal process against the accused. The defendant is then notified of the charges and given the opportunity to respond, usually through a court arraignment. The case proceeds to trial, during which the prosecution presents its evidence to prove the defendant's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Next, when to use. 1. Felony. An offense, other than criminal contempt, must be prosecuted by an indictment if it is punishable. a. By death, or b. By imprisonment for more than one year. 2. Misdemeanor. An offense punishable by imprisonment for one year or less may be prosecuted in accordance with Rule 58 b. 1. Waiving Indictment If the defendant waives indictment in open court after being informed of the charges against them and their rights, a crime carrying a sentence of more than a year may be prosecuted by information. Indictment's Nature and Contents 1. In general, an attorney for the government must sign the indictment or information and it must be a clear, concise, and documented description of the crucial details forming the offense accused. An official introduction and conclusion are not required. An accusation made in one count may be referenced in another count. A count may claim that the defendant committed the offense by unspecified means or that the defendant did so using one or more specific methods. The official or customary citation of the statute, rule, regulation, or other piece of law that the defendant is alleged to have broken must be included for each count in the indictment or information. When a defendant's identity is unknown for the purposes of an indictment as defined in Section 3282 of Title 18 of the United States Code, it is sufficient for the indictment to identify the defendant as someone with a specific DNA profile, as that term is defined in Section 3282, even though the defendant's name is not known. A case number, on the other hand, is a unique identifier assigned to a specific legal case. It is used to track and reference the case throughout the judicial system. A case number is typically generated when a complaint or initial legal document is filed with a court. It helps court personnel, attorneys, and parties involved in the case to identify and locate the relevant documents and proceedings related to that particular case. In summary, an indictment is a formal accusation of a criminal offense issued by a grand jury, while a case number is a unique identifier assigned to a specific legal case. An indictment is used to bring serious criminal charges against an individual or entity and initiates the legal process leading to a trial. A case number is used for administrative purposes to track and reference the relevant documents and proceedings of a specific case.